What's all this fuss about? It's my birthday, yes, my favorite time of the year. My birthday, the day I was born is celebrated today. And this is scaring me off a little bit, so I hope I don't catch on fire. For this special day, I'm gonna teach you how to make the moistest chocolate cake on earth. Yes, it is one of those cakes that is even hard to slice because it's so moist and rich that you think it's gonna break. All frosted with an amazing milk chocolate frosting and also decorated like a, like if the queen was coming for my birthday. Maybe she is, we never know. I'm gonna start by my frosting because it takes around two hours to set. So we should start by the frosting so at the time the cake is ready, the frosting is gonna be ready as well. Here I have my heavy cream. Then I'm gonna add my salt and honey. The honey will give a glow to the frosting. All the amount of ingredients are on my website. The link is under the description here. Bring this cream to a simmer and by that I mean small bubbles. My heavy cream just came to a simmer and now I'm gonna process my chocolates here. You can either use your food processor or your blender. I'm going with the food processor today. This frosting is a great alternative for the classic buttercream, which I personally hate. Buttercream is way too fatty, way too rich, and I feel in my palate, so I've never liked it. This is a good alternative for a chocolate frosting because you use more chocolate than butter, so that's the real deal. Here I'm using half dark chocolate and half milk chocolate. If you only use milk chocolate, the frost is gonna be very sweet, but it's up to you. Process the chocolates together. With the heavy cream still hot, add it to the chocolates. Process it for one minute and everything is gonna become melted and gorgeous. Now you add the confectioner's sugar. This helps with the texture. And with the machine on, you start adding cold butter, little by little. The butter will improve the texture and make the frosting super shiny and beautiful. Just like this. Our gorgeous frosting is ready. And now we just have to leave it at room temperature and we will set. If you put it in your fridge, it's gonna harden and it's gonna become impossible to spread in your cake. So you have to leave it at room temperature and it's gonna gain that perfect, perfect, nice texture, just a spreadable texture. Just like a cream cheese, I would say. Give it a nice tear every 30 minutes. If you live in a really hot place, you have to find a cool place in your house to leave this frosting. Do you remember I told you this was gonna be the moistest cake on earth? I wasn't joking. This stuff is real, my friends. But the reason this cake is so moist, it's not because I'm a genius, unfortunately. It's just because I know my ingredients and you should know as well. That's why I'm here to save you. Um, I'm gonna create a chemical reaction in my batter. I'm gonna make this batter release carbon dioxide and those bubbles are gonna keep its moisture. It's gonna keep it fluffy and it's gonna be a very special cake. And you must be thinking by now, well, I guess the chemical reaction is gonna be pretty hard to achieve. Very hard. It's not at all, not at all. It's actually very simple. You just use an alkaline ingredient such as baking soda and you mix it with an acid such as sour cream. And when these two ingredients are combined together, they react and it creates like an explosion, like pfft, but it's just an explosion of flavor. It's not a volcano or anything like that. Add to the sour cream the dark chocolate and butter. Now we just have to melt this over a bain-marie. Don't freak out, you just put the bowl over a pan with boiling water. Make sure the hot water is not touching the bottom of the bowl. We want to gently melt this. After melted, add the cocoa powder dissolved in hot water. This step will create a depth of flavor to the cake. Stir to combine and remove from the heat. Gather your freshly crushed eggs and whisk it with sugar. This cake is truly simple. So right there I have my melted chocolate with sour cream. Here I have my eggs with uh, sugar. And right here I'm gonna put the dry ingredients. And that's it, you're gonna combine the three and bling, it's gonna be a gorgeous cake. Sorry, but I have to comment on something. With this hair moving like this, it's making me look like an exotic chicken. It's totally taking my concentration away as I edit this video. Okay, back to the recipe. In a smaller bowl, add the dry ingredients. Flour, baking soda, the alkaline ingredient, and the baking powder. 
Now we just have to combine the three bowls and make it a big party, like the bowl party. Three bowls invited and all the guests eating the bowls. Okay, that didn't make any sense. First, you add the chocolate mixture to the eggs and whisk it just to combine. At last, you add the dry ingredients. You can sift them or not, just make sure there are no lumps. As soon as you add the dry ingredients, the chemical reaction starts and you can totally hear it happening. Bubbles in eruption, that's why now we have to work it quickly. Make sure your pans are nicely buttered and floured so the cake doesn't stick to it. Split the batter in two 9-inch pans. Have your oven preheated at 350 Fahrenheit and bake it for approximately 35 minutes. The oven time might vary, so test it to make sure it's done. If you insert a toothpick in the middle of the cake and it comes out almost clean, it's done. With the cake still warm, not super hot, turn it upside down in your cooling rack. If you don't have one, that's fine, just turn it upside down in a plate. Ta-da! A beautiful chocolate cake. What I have here is a piece of cardboard from any box that I had in my house, and I cut it the size of my baking pan. This way I can unmold one of my cakes over it. It's gonna be much easier to frost and to transport this cake. Now, all that's left for us to do is assemble, and that's it. I'm gonna teach you how to decorate, very easy. First rule to make your cake flat, make a vertical cut to each one of them. Just like this, you'll understand why. Now, with a serrated knife, cut the cake in half. This cake is super moist, so you might find some difficulties in just cutting it in half, but you can do it. I did it, you can do it. Now you just have to remove the top part of the cake to frost it. I simply lift it, but this is kind of dangerous, but I enjoy living on the edge. If you're too scared your cake's gonna break, you can just slide another piece of cardboard underneath it and lift it. As you can see, there's a big hill in there. I didn't slice it very evenly, but it doesn't matter. With the trick I taught you, this won't be crooked. Look how moist this cake is. Yum. Spread three tablespoons of your frosting here. Don't go too heavy between the layers because the frosting on the outside is gonna be pretty heavy. Put the cake top back on, making sure the vertical cut matches. This way, it doesn't matter how uneven you slice the cake, it will always be back on place. Oh, by the way, I like living on the edge, but this is usually what happens to me. Good luck with the puzzle, Haiza. Continue to pile up your cake with frosting between the layers. The most important is to always match the vertical cut for each cake. Even if you have to move the cake a little bit, it doesn't matter. Do it, because the most important is to match this cut. Well, I know it looks like it's gonna be crooked and ugly, but it won't. This is just the inner interface, the interior of it. The outside is gonna be perfect very soon. Just like most people I know, ugly in the inside, beautiful in the outside. <sighs> now, what I recommend you to do is to choose the plate where you're gonna display your cake. See why it's good to have the cardboard? You can just move the cake around. Oh, before I put the cake here, I'm going to cover it with my parchment paper because after I decorate it, I want to just remove the parchment paper. Now, we have to thinly frost the outside of the cake. What we are doing here, we are just making the whole cake uniform. We are kind of covering every flaw, every little hole. This is what we do in our walls when we move. Spin the cake stand to create an even top. Then place it in your freezer for five minutes just to harden the exterior. Here I have a large pastry tip and I'm gonna put the rest of my frosting in this pastry bag. Lancelot's totally in the vibe. Well, the frosting is partially set, so it's ready for us to do all the decorations. So now the way you have to act is like if there was no tomorrow. Remove the parchment paper from underneath the cake. Now to create the ombre design, you just have to pipe the frosting in small round shapes like this. After you do an entire vertical roll like this, you come with a small spoon, a teaspoon, and as much the circle. 
Then you come back with the pastry bag and create another roll over the smudged one. This is really therapeutic. Make sure you enjoy yourself while you're doing it. It doesn't take more than 20 minutes. Here I'm gonna decorate the cake with the fresh peonies I got from my farmer's market. They're not edible, okay? It's just for the look of love. They'll look okay for up to four hours. Mmm, I don't know what smells best, the flowers? Or the chocolate, both combined, wow, wow. Nature, Haiza, nature and Haiza, combined, smells good. For so many years, you guys asked me for a good celebration cake and I think I did a pretty good job here. You can even use this cake for a wedding cake. It's kind of rustic, but beautiful. It just looks like food I wanna eat, you know? When I see cakes with fondant, to me, it looks like toothpaste and it kind of tastes like toothpaste, so I don't wanna eat that. This is what I wanna eat. I want something that looks delicious and decadent. This is it. Now I have to go because my friends must be arriving and I have to kind of clean myself because I look pretty dirty as usual. Just very messy. And see you next week with another delicious dessert. It won't be my birthday, so it's not gonna be that special. But still, an average day is pretty special. At least to me. And bye. Bling! Se levantar, quem levantou pra sair perto do lugar? E agora cadê teu novo amor? Cadê que ele nunca funcionou? Cadê que ele nada resolveu? If you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe, share, comment, like, blah blah blah, so I can keep doing what I do. Oh, and don't even bother asking me how I glue these stars in my face because I just use the same glue I used to to glue stars in my balloons. He said it wasn't toxic. I'm not sure if Michelle Fun would appreciate this, but that's the way I do my makeup. Okay, bye.